Okay, today we're back with the Elgin again. So last time we uh, we had it running when it was hooked up to the hose, it was pumping water, but I got another impeller for it. Uh, we'll put that on in a bit. But right now, I think what we want to do is hook up an OMC type fuel pickup for it. From what I understand, this, there's nothing on it now, but uh, from what I understand, there was, I don't know, it was, it was either proprietary or, or Chrysler. And uh, I don't know many people who run Chrysler stuff. I think it would be easier to sell and uh, get products for if I decide to keep it, which I may. Um, if I uh, if I use an OMC OMC style hookup, so the hookup I'm going to take will be from our donor Johnson 25 horse. I'll rip the fuel pickup off that. Okay, so I got my new uh, new my million year old fuel pickup from uh, the Johnson 25 horse and some new fuel line. What is that? Yeah. Anyway, there's a hole right here, and the fuel line can run through that. Then here is where the fuel line goes on this barb here. Now, what I'm thinking is this has a mounting point on the back. So is there anything wrong? With me mounting it like this is that is that such a bad thing to do let's see we'll push back further so it's not getting banged around but like there or should i just leave it as a pigtail what do we think just like that is that is that so terrible i don't think it is but i've uh i have been wrong before and that would mean i'd have to drill through this do we want to do that this this vintage, this vintage piece. Do you want to do that just for convenience or should I just leave it kind of flopping? I don't know. Hmm. Cause that would be pretty neat. As in neat as in like tucked away, hiding away, effective neat, not cool neat. Um, if I just had it there. Um, so we'll see. But what I know we must do is, uh, so I'll call this together and uh, see how it works with, well, it'll work fine. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at now. And I'll, uh, I'll hook that up. It just makes it slide on a bit better onto the hoose. ourselves is this what we want I feel like I leave it it's like it's pretty good like that maybe I don't know it's not that much of a pain to have it there it's not like it's gonna be in the way maybe I'll leave it like that it's kind of sitting there by just by tension And that way if something does hit it, it's not like it'll break. Because it can just flex. Maybe pigtails the way. Now we'll see. Okay, so that's that. So now we have that. I just gotta zip tie it. Um, and then that's installed. Um, I guess next we'll change the impeller. Here's the part number for the impeller for this guy. Uh, you want to look at the, I think it's the four, seven dash number there. That's the one that matters. This one, right? 
What is it right there? Dash two. Anyway, it's a Mercury part. Um, I guess Mercury bought out Chrysler. Chrysler bought out Elgin. And uh, that's how it all went down. So we are going to see if this goes on. Let me uh, lift up the engine and we'll uh, get to the lower unit there. We'll try and figure that one out. But I've never taken one of these apart before. Okay, so we're gonna take off this lower unit here. Um, I kind of like this. Um, they have screws. Well, I don't like screws, but, but I like that there's a bolt there um, instead of a threaded piece of aluminum like in the Johnsons. I gotta say that the, the build quality of this, it seems pretty nice. Like you can't, you can't, if you, if you break a bolt, you can just get a new bolt. Um, whereas the Johnsons, you strip a bolt out, have you seen in, may have seen in uh, my 10 horse Johnson video, I had to mess around with tapping and stuff like that. Not a big deal, but not everyone has a tap. It's easier to go buy a bolt. Um, yeah, so we're taking this guy off. 7 sixteenths. This, this lower unit is only going to come off for a second. And then go back on with the impeller. Yeah, so after I get the impeller on, I'm going to drain the lower unit oil. And... Drain the lower unit oil, put more oil in it. And I'm going to run it um, in the water. And see how it holds up. Because I, I do... So... These things over over here anyway, um, they don't really command a great price. Like if I got this thing up running nicely, probably 250 bucks is what I'd end off at. Mind you, I've paid 30 bucks for it, and all I bought so far was the impeller, which was $17. And I also got a, uh, a fuel pump gasket or diaphragm, and that was like 20 bucks or something like that. So I don't think, I'm not sure if this thing's even been off. So yeah, all that to say, yeah, and the fabricator part, like I'm cool selling engines with all their original parts, but to be comfortable running it myself, because I, I tell people I'm a safe boater, but uh, I can't say the same for or others. So what, does this just fall out? Okay, I'm gonna put a bolt back in. So just sound finger tight. Because because we gotta take that guy off. Right here. Looks like a jam nut. That'll keep me in the ballpark when I put it back on. Probably seven sixteenths. Yes. Yes. No. Yeah, let's do this. So 7 16 and 3 8 This thing's never been off. I'm, I'm peeling paint out on this guy right now. Okay, I think we can take this off now. So let's do that. After I get this guy off, it should just come on and drop right here. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Got these threads. Awesome. 
ますよ。待て。The much ballyhooed elegant lower unit with impeller housing. It all looks in good shape. Just from Just from a visual inspection there. Okay, let's bring you up to the, the bench there. This looks like an impeller housing. So I'm gonna open this beauty up, throw in our new impeller, you see, and we'll put it back together. Maybe I'll drain the, now nah, we'll put it back together. Nah, they always come in one way or another. A couple of big screws. When you buy an outboard that's used, unless maybe it came from a me mechanic, that you trust. Um, or if you trust the guy that sold it to you, um, you change the impeller. I think all unit lower units come off relatively the same. A um, couple bolts or screws. And then there's a housing with the rubber propeller in it that you change out. Got an o-ring on the shaft here. Hopefully that doesn't turn into dust. Ooh, it's pretty, oh yeah, it turned into dust. I think I got another one. O-ring, dust, sad face. Okay. And it's gonna fit. So we got ourselves here a 10 fin o ring. That's what came off. That's what I'm putting on. So, so I've heard of this, and I've heard that this one will pump just fine. You see, this thing, this thing looks fine, it looks okay, but uh, but is it? I'm gonna keep it just to get a part number off it, maybe replace it later down the road with. What came with it but yeah this should just slide right on what's nice about these old things is the, the people who um the people who The people who know about them, they're often really passionate about them, which is great. And they'll they'll give you all the they'll, they they want to pass they want to pass it on. So if you got a question about these, they got answers, which which is awesome for me. Um, so we're turning clockwise. getting jammed up on the edge of the bench by the prop but we're good now so there you have it that is a tin peller folks gotta line up the screw holes and get the screws yeah and I'm glad that fits it's what I expected to find in there. Um, it's just uh, again with these with these old things, you, you never you never know. You can you gotta throw a bit of hope in gotta throw a bit of hope in there when you go order a part, or unless you you go to the dealer and. Then you can look at it at least. So yeah, that's one impeller. Done and dusted. This guy probably pumps a, a ton of water though. I'm wondering if there's... The guys on the forum said it didn't make much of a difference, so... 
I'll trust their judgment. Oh, the O-ring, yes. We shan't forget about that. Mm. Same one? Yeah, okay, it should be fine. Famous last word, Jane. Right? It'll be fine. Let's throw it back up uh, into the engine. Okay, we're right back. Okay, so we're putting this guy back on. So the tricky part is going to be aiming the shift shaft. That'll be the tricky part. So when you put this back in, you see that this circle right here, the shift shaft goes up through that. Yeah, you can see the light there. So that's good. That'll make it lining it up a lot easier. Um, and then all we got to worry about is getting this tube in the, the housing there and sniping this drive shaft into the engine. So now that you got the lay of the land, let's see how it goes in practice. Guiding. We have made it through. Now I gotta make sure. Okay, it feels like we got the splines there. Leave a screw hanging as we do. And leave this one in super loose just so we have as much wiggle room as possible. I'm talking two or three threads on. Okay, there it is, ready to be threaded on. And want to see my marks in here? Did I mangle them up? Oh no, I still see them. Okay, that's good. I got my jam nut there too. So the Johnsons of this area, of area, era, they don't have anything like this, but there's this nice little big stout detent that you, you pull back and then your, your lower unit frees up. The Johnsons, or the OMCs rather, they do it all by friction. They're fine, but I like the, the positive engagement. There you go. Put these bolts on.
Okay. That should be neutral. That's the direction. That's forward. Okay, so gears mesh up. Super. Lower unit oil next. So I cracked it before just to see that there was oil in it so I could just test fire it. But now we're going to drain the oil and put in some new stuff. Yeah, so there's no water in there. Mold gear oil. So let that drain out and uh, be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna throw some gear in, oil in here. I'm just using a uh, 80 weight gear oil. Um, there's like marine stuff you can get, I don't know. Like I'm, it probably like emulsifies water better or something like that. But. This isn't a, going to be on a chartered fishing boat or anything, so I'll need to get this. And we are squeezing. Okay, well, my camera died while I was mid-fill there, but, but you get the gist. Um, you saw the oil escape through the top, and then I put the two screws back in, making sure the plastic grommets or washers we're with the screws when I replace them. So now, um, I've decided I'm going to put the bolt in that. So it's just a quarter inch bit. That won't do a lot. I'm going to put a washer on that. Anyway, um, I'll do that tomorrow. I got to get going. I got to eat.